people like some of you. I could see how you think, how you play. I could play low stakes holding hold them for more than eight hours. And over this vlog, I'll try my best to give you some solid tips over how to beat your low stake game in the casino around you. Now let's get to business because we have a lot of interesting hands to go through today. First hand, I'm in the small blind with pocket kings, two limpers, button raises to 20, button is Branson. I decide to throw bet 280 to make a inviable sizing for Branson to call. Only he calls, and we go heads up to a flop that comes 10-7-3 with two clubs. Effective stack is 420, and here is a clear C bet. Because I don't have the king of clubs, I'm gonna tend to C bet a little bigger, because if a club comes in the turn, I won't have any defense. So I C bet 85, almost exactly half pot. If Branson calls and the turn comes a safe card, I will shove already in the turn, but this is not gonna happen because Branson folds and we win this hand. Next hand, I'm on the big line with ace king offsuit. I just got a hand, just so you know. I started this meetup game kind of worried about making money on the people that came to the meetup game, so I was trying to be nice and I said this. And when there are three limpas and Branson open raise to 20 after me saying this, this is a clear three bet. But as I said before, I was trying to be nice and I decided to do something I'm gonna do most likely 1% in every 100 times, which is flatting this button with a skin offsuit. And that's what I did, I flat. But it's way better to three bet here, both to get value from worse hand than yours, also to play a bigger pot in position with a premium. I called, other two players call and four players see the flop, which comes a pretty interesting one, King Queen Jack with two diamonds and I got no diamond in my hand. Branson C bets 35 and here even though I got top pair top kicker I'm losing for planting combinations of hands like Queen Jack, King Jack, King Queen, Jacks, Queens. Also Kings that there is only one combination in the board. So instead of raising here I decided to call and play the turn in position. Middle position and hijack call, so we remain going four way to the turn, which comes a deuce of hearts. Now there are two flush draws in the board. Branson decides to bet 140, which is two thirds of the pot. I doubt Branson is bluffing here versus other three people. So now I think I'm losing here, most likely to Branson, but I could be losing for the other players as well. And here I decided to trust my read and fold my ace king. Only one in the middle position calls. They go heads up to a turn that comes an eight of diamonds. And now she checks and Branson bets 35. She calls and Branson shows queen jack offsuit, making two pair in the flop and winning the hand. Next hand, I'm in the under the gun plus one with black queens. Under the gun straddles to six. I open raise to $20. Cut off calls. Big blind goes all in for 35. Cut off stack is $400 and I'm gonna raise here. The question is how much? 90. And I decided to make it 90 this time. She's in position versus me, but I'm just crushing her range. Flat calling from the cutoff. I think you should fold, to be honest, but. Even though I tried to warn her, she calls and we go three ways to the flop with one player all in. Flop comes jack 8-6 with two clubs. I have the queen of clubs. Side pot is 110 and I decided to bet two thirds of the side pot, which is $70. She quickly calls. Turn was a deuce of hearts. And now with two flush draws on the board and I'm having a over pair. It's a clear shove all in. Stack to pot ratio is pretty much one to one and I could be representing a flush draw. So I shove all in and she calls. But because I had too many videos in my cell phone, my back up decided to stop recording and I couldn't get me shoving all in and she calling but in the end I shoved she called she had ace jack so after she calls pre-flop there is no escape for her she is gonna put all her money in especially with two flush draws in the board on the turn and we win this hand. Next hand, I'm on the hijack with pocket threes. Under the gun raises to 13. I call in the hijack. Other three players call and five players see an amazing flop of 10-3 deuce rainbow. I got middle set. They check to me and here is a clear C bet. And I'm gonna see bet small to 40% of the pot. $31. Two players call. Three players see the turn, which is a really safe one. Seven of hearts. They check to me again. And now I'm gonna bet again. I bet $60. Around 40% of the pot again. First player folds. And now he shows all in for $190 and I snap call. He already realizes he's in a bad shape and I tell him I have a set. River is a deuce of diamonds and he shows pocket eights and we win this one. I change seats to the second table of this meetup game so I could play with other players. I'm winning $800 so far. Right, if no one raises, blind raise. If no raise. 
Bro, I'm almost creating another YouTube account yeah. so I can subscribe to you again. Because you, you deserve a lot, <laughs> man, bro. Next hand, I'm on the big blind with ace jack offsuit, plus one limps, low jack raises to 15, one caller. And here, I'm gonna squeeze. Ace jack is ahead of most of their range, so instead of calling, I believe the best play here is squeezing. And the sizing I'm usually gonna do out of position is twice the size of the pot, making a little bigger or a little smaller, depending on how good is my hand, how often the players in position are gonna call me, and also how big is their stack. And here, because Ace Jack also doesn't develop so well post flop, and I believe they will call me pretty often, I decided to make it 85, which is more than twice the size of the pot, and that's why I did that. Woman in the other side of the table thinks for a long time and then decides to call. She has 190 in her stack, so SPR is a little bigger than one, and the smaller the SPR, the more important is the pot, so most likely I'm gonna shove this flop, unless I hit a great hand and decide to slow play, which is not what happened. Flop comes all three in. queen queen, and I put her all in. She thinks for a while, and then decides to call. You're probably good. What a good bet, bro. You're probably good. Turn comes a king of diamonds, river a five of hearts. I show my ace jack, and most likely I'm losing this hand, and then she shows ace three of diamonds, Diamonds, making a pair of threes in the flop and winning the hand. Oh, oh my, my god! god. Oh my god! You flopped the queen three? You, you uh, oh. three laid down. Next hand I see king queen suited on the button. I couldn't record the beginning of the hand but someone opened raise, I three batted and the big blind decided to call. The big blind was a beginner player and he was doing some things very bad in terms of playing good or bad and he was playing bad but that's normal for someone who started the game right now and he decided to call and we go heads up to the flop, the pot has $90 and the flop comes ace king queen with two spades, I got two pair, he checks to me and I see bet $40 for value, big blind quickly calls and the turn comes a six of clubs, big blind stack is $400 so the sizing I do here must take into account that he has $400 in his stack and most likely I'm gonna try to extract maximum value here with this hand. I bet $100 this time, two thirds of the pot. Big blind thinks for more than a minute and decides to call again. River is a blank, a seven of clubs. Now big blind checks to me again. And instead of putting him all in, I decided to put less pressure on him and bet $205. So he could still have $100 in his stack in case he calls and loses. He calls, I show the bad news, and he shows Queen Jack also having only third pair and calling the three streets. And here is one tip for you guys that play low stakes. This type of player is gonna be in many low stakes tables around the US because this is the cheapest game in the casino so most likely the worst players are gonna decide to play this cheapest game. And the way you should play against those players is a exploitative way because those guys are making many mistakes. So the best way to play versus those guys is to adapt your game to those guys in a way that you maximize your profits over them. And to be able to do that you gotta understand how they are playing, understand their mistakes and adapt to those mistakes. Game Theory Optimal, which is the famous GTO that all you guys probably heard of, is a great way for you to have poker fundamentals, for you to get those fundamentals. But GTO will not be the best way to play versus players like those. Versus players who play bad, the best way to play is an exploitative way. And I highly recommend you to keep that in mind next time you decide to play low stakes in a casino. Next hand is an Omaha Bone Pot, very popular game in Los Angeles, in which you get 4 cards and it comes 2 boards, everybody puts $10 and then the game starts from there. First board is 779 Rainbow, second board is 910 Jack with 2 spades, I got Ace 10 Jack Queen, Jack Queen of Spades, so I got a straight flush draw, I also got top 2 pair in the lower board and I got a gut shop in the upper board. I'm looking pretty good in this board early position bets 35 and i got a great hand here to call and that's what i do i call cut off calls as well and then button decides to bet pot for 255 this play shows a lot of strength from the button he probably has a great hand early position goes all in for less showing a lot of strength as well and now i'm in a very tough spot because even though i'm getting a good price to call 255 for a pot that has 615 i don't have many outs in my favor to go for the nuts I'm going mostly for the king of spades or the eight of spades in the lower board. 
I could hit a 10 or a jack in the lower board and have the nuts as well. I'm not going for the nuts in the upper board. I don't think I'm in such a good shape here and most likely calling would be an unprofitable play. But it's really hard to fold the straight flush draw that I have. But even though it's hard, it's not impossible. I'm here to make the best decision I can. And in this particular play, I believe the best decision is folding. What the fuck? Bro, I feel like I'm gonna regret. I'm gonna regret. I'm gonna regret, whatever. And I decide to let this hand go. Most likely they are crushing me to make me feel a little better. Cut off goes all in as well. And let's see how this yes, hand is gonna yes. turn out. Ryan, really? well, I mean, I have to. I got one board lock and I feel like at least Can two of you the money were on flush. At least two of you were on flush. They're, they're, they're both all in, so he's all in and he calls. So we'll we'll figure out the count after. Okay. Well, you guys wanna show? Turn and river on both boards would be bad for me. I got the nuts on the bottom. Yes. Actually, I got the nuts twice on the bottom. They both show a hand that would justify my fold, so I'm feeling better now. And we escape from losing 350. Save some money here, Which guys. is something that is really important for you to beat low stakes. For you to have the biggest win rate you can, you need to be able to avoid losing on cooler hands that you would be losing a lot. And you also need to be good at extracting maximum value on hands that you are the one who has the best hand and you are able to extract from your opponents. And in this particular hand, I say the $350 and let's keep going with the hands. Next hand I'm in the cutoff with King 10 offsuit early position and hijack limb I raise to 20 in position both players call and three players see the flop which is a bad one 9-6 deuce rainbow they check to me and I don't think I will be capable of making them fold a better hand than mine so I decide to check back Turn is great, a 10 of spades, now I got top pair. They check to me and I decide to bet $40, two thirds of the pot. Only early position call and we go heads up to a river that comes a blank, a four of diamonds. He checks to me again and I'm gonna bet for value. I bet 85, little less than two thirds of the pot. And now early position, after thinking for a long time, decide to check raise for $250. Really bro? <laughs> <laughs> really? Damn. Gotcha, that's good, huh? Bro, I got a great hand here. I really got a great hand, but the question is, is this guy doing that as a bluff? He told me earlier that he plays poker for two months, but I doubt that because he was a pretty good player, you know? He wasn't making so many mistakes and most people that play for two months makes a lot of mistakes, but maybe he's just talented and is able to play a good poker even only after two months, who knows? Bro, if that's a bluff, congrats, bro. Congrats, bro. <laughs> I'm really looking at him and trying to get something out of him, like if he is nervous, if he is too calm. And you guys can see here that he looks calm, he looks chilling. I doubt he is bluffing, but as I said before, if he was bluffing, congrats, because that's a very solid bluff. So I believe the best decision here for me is folding because most people won't be able to check raise this as a bluff and I decided to fold this hand and he shows 9-10 suited making top pair in the flop and top two pairs in the turn we save some money in this hand and we lose this one this table is too nice for me not to show you guys <laughs> hey. Yes. Quick news for you and it is that I'm back at playing online poker in a consistent basis and I'm doing that on Club GG. They have games from 5 cents, 10 cents until $10, $20, Hold'em and Omaha. If you join the club, you'll probably see me playing there. I usually start playing heads up so I put my VIP pip higher. So if you wanna play with me in the same club as me or versus me, just click the link below and follow the instructions and now let's get back to the hands. Next hand I'm in the cutoff with pocket aces, under the gun straddles to 6, middle position raises to 16, and from the cutoff I definitely gonna 3 bet, I decide to make it $50, little more than 3x of his raise, I remember that when I did this raise I regret it a little bit cause I could make a little more invitable sizing for him like 48, 46, thankfully that didn't matter cause he quickly called and we went heads up to a flop that is not the best but definitely not the worst as well, 5, 6, 8 with 2 spades, I got no spade in my hand, he checked to me and here I believe the best play is to see bet and that's what I did I see bet a little more than two-thirds of the pot he quickly decided to raise for $200 in this hand I'm losing for fives sixes eights I don't think he has seven nine in his range I don't think he has eight six eight five 
And this is actually a great situation to put here because, okay, he's putting a lot of pressure on me. But what should I do here with pocket aces? Should I fold this? Of course not, you know? Even though he's putting pressure on me, it's a clear call. And that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna call. In the end, you are there to make the best decision you can. And the best decision you can do here is to call because you're still winning hands like pocket queens, pocket jacks, pocket tens, pocket nines, flush draws that he can have and you don't block any flush draw. So here is a clear call and that's what I did. I called and I was hoping for a safe turn which was a six of diamonds that is definitely a okay turn and now he shoves all in i snap call river is terrible a nine of spades i show my hand first to be nice to him aces i got aces oh my god Dude, i have eight six one yeah in the end, he shows pocket queens and we win this one. Next hand, I'm in the low jack with king 10 suited, two limpers before me, as usual. I race to 20 in position. My friend Brian, who is a good player, decides to 3 bet from the hijack to $60. Player in the other side of the table calls and he seemed to be a little careless now. Maybe he is a little tilted. King 10 suited is under my 4 betting range in this position. But because the other guy called, I decided to call and see a flop instead of 4 betting. We go 3 ways to a flop that comes King 97 rainbow with 1 club. Big blind checks, I check. Surprisingly, Brian checks back as well and we see a turn of a 10 of spades now i got top two pair big blind checks to me again and i decide to check again most of the times i'm gonna lead here but in this particular time i felt like brian would bet so i decided to check to be able to check raise 135 thankfully brian did what we wanted him to do which is betting he bets 135 big blind folds effective stack is 900 dollars and now I'm thoughtful about what sizing I want to make. There is one flush draw in the board. Brian could have also some pairs with the king, like ace-king, king-queen. With ace-king or king-queen, Brian would have some outs versus me, but he would be pretty crushed. So I decided to target those hands and make a sizing of $400 to be able to shove to $500 in the river. Brian thinks for a long time and in the end decides to call and we go heads out to a river that comes another 10. I don't even think I needed that 10, but after this 10 comes, now I'm sure I'm winning. I put him all in for $500 and he quickly folds. I show my hand to be nice and afterwards he says he had a skin. But I confess I had a hard time believing in him, realizing that if he has a skin, King. he would at least think for longer on the river don't you guys think like imagine he has ace king like okay i buy the check back in the flop but would i buy the fold like fast in the river winning 1300 dollars so far but the episode is not over yet because in this hand i got pocket fives from the cutoff under the gun raises to 12 middle position re-raises to 30 middle position was kind of a crazy player so i don't think his range was that strong and i got a great hand to call from the cutoff and play deep stack in position so I call, Brian and open the raise and calls as well, so 4 players to the flop, which of course I make a set, I'm running amazingly this day, especially after I made that fold in the bomb pot. Under the gun who was the open raiser bets $75, I'm the only one who calls and we go heads up to the turn, which is a complete blank, a deuce of hearts, he goes all in and I snap call, river is kind of scary but I doubt he has an 8, he mucks and I win this hand. And after playing for more than 8 hours, I end up winning $1754 in 8 hours and 20 minutes of game. Let me know what you thought about this episode. If you like this one, there are plenty others that you also like as well. Just click any of those options in the screen. The mission of this channel is helping you become a better poker player and see you next time.